right behind you in about 30 seconds.
set back down. Supposed to lean on the water cooler and talk.
Our processional hymn may be found in your programs, All Creatures of Our God and King. Please join in singing our processional.
Please join in singing, O oh God Beyond All Praising, in your programs.
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. I now invite the Administrator Apostolic of the Church of Mobile, His Excellency Oscar Lipscomb, to greet the assembly on this auspicious occasion. Please sit down. Your Excellency Archbishop Pietro Sambi, Nuncio and Representative of our Holy Father in these churches of the United States of America, my brother bishops and archbishops, brother priests, deacons, religious, esteemed members of the clergy of other persuasions, venerable sisters who come in such numbers, ladies of the medal, knights of St. Gregory, knights of the Holy Sepulchre and their ladies, and all of you who are guests to us here and in the venerable Sangha Theater, which is also receiving this by closed television and will share through the Eucharist in this special mass of thanksgiving and installation for Archbishop Rodi. Archbishop Sambi should not have invited you to sit because that's the symbol in Mobile. He's gonna talk for a long time, but that's, that's, that's a past circumstance. Once again, we have reason to be deeply grateful to the Mother Sea of New Orleans when it was Louisiana and the Floridas in 1826 and sent us our first bishop as a vicar apostolic, Michael Portier, in whose cathedral we celebrate today. And now, by way of Biloxi, and for this we thank the Church of Biloxi as well, we receive Archbishop Thomas J. Rohde as the second archbishop, and I haven't counted the numbers since Portier, I'm sorry. He comes to us remarkably gifted, responding to the will of the Holy Father. No one is, has no tenure like that of an archbishop or bishop who simply listens, and if the pope calls, he stops everything and changes. And thank you for changing in the midst of grave and serious concerns in Biloxi. We will help you with those while you're here with us. Once. I heard a remarkable inauguration installation at the temple on Spring Hill Avenue. I think it was at Rabbi Stephen Jacobs, whose professor came to introduce him to that congregation. It was a unique address. He said, I know Rabbi Jacobs, and I don't know you. And I know he is worthy of you. My question this evening is, are you worthy of him? And that's a question that we probably should ask ourselves as we receive a fresh new bishop with enthusiasm and ideals and changes. Yes, there will be changes. But it will be the same faith, the same sense of Jesus standing in our midst because of him, the same face of Christ that radiates from our clergy and especially the deacons who are ordained, all of whom have a direct connection and link to the bishop in the power of orders that is validated by our Holy Father who sends him to us. I venture to say, Archbishop Rohde, that as time unfolds, we will all come to discover what I know, and you have distinguished in your service already to the church, that you are indeed worthy, and we, by our efforts, our acceptance, our collaboration, and our love for you, will prove worthy of you. Thank you for coming. Your Excellency Oscar Lipscomb, Archbishop Emeritus of Mobile and Apostolic Administrator, Your Excellency Thomas Rodi, Archbishop Designate, my brother Archbishops and Bishops, 
dear priests, deacons, religious and lay faithful of the Church of Mobile, Alabama, to each of you here this afternoon in this historic Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, peace and joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. The bishop is a servant of the gospel for the hope of the world, Council Vatican II. He must keep his eyes ever fixed on Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, the one who gave his life for the salvation of his flock. Standing in the midst of his people as one who serves, the bishop is to be especially close to his clergy and is faithful. I quote, as Christ is the primordial icon of the Father and of the, the manifestation of his merciful presence among men and women, so too the bishop in his ministry of teaching, governing, and sanctifying is to be among his own a reflection of the word of God, the heart of Jesus, and the source of encouragement for all whom he touches. Today, the Church in Mobile rejoices as His Excellency Thomas Rodi is solemnly installed as the second Archbishop and ninth Bishop of this beloved community of faith. Your Excellency, we congratulate you and assure, assure you of our prayerful support. Indeed, we are confident that in your episcopal ministry to the people of God in Mobile, you will radiate the face of the Good Shepherd and in words taken from our Holy Father's recent address to the American bishops, that you will fulfill the call to make all things new in Christ, our hope, and lead your people to an encounter with the living God, the source of that life-transforming hope of which the gospel speaks. On this wonderful occasion, we thank in a special way his Excellency Archbishop Oscar Lipscomb, a native son of Mobile and the first Archbishop of Mobile, for his faithful, dedicated leadership as Chief Shepherd for almost 28 years and for his valued service more recently as Apostolic Administrator. And now, with great joy, I will read for you an English translation of the apostolic letter by which our Holy Father, Benedict XVI, appointed Bishop Thomas Rodi, Metropolitan Archbishop of Mobile. Benedict, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to the venerable brother Thomas John Rodi, until now, Bishop of Biloxi, transferred to the Archdiocese of Mobile, greetings and apostolic blessing. Since provision must be made for the Metropolitan Church of Mobile, which is awakened due to the resignation of His Excellency the Most Reverend Oscar Lipscomb, you, venerable, venerable brother, endowed as you are with proven qualities and much pastoral experience, seemed suitable to be appointed to it. Therefore, we occupy the chair of the Blessed Peter 
and are solicitous for the welfare of the Lord's entire flock. Having accepted the opinion of the Congregation for Bishops by the Supreme Apostolic Authority, I release you from the bond of the Diocese of Biloxi and appoint you, Metropolitan Archbishop of Mobile, together with all the rights and obligation. Indeed, we mandate that you take care to have this letter read, read to the clergy and the people of this sea, and we exhort them to welcome you warmly and to remain in union with him. Finally, venerable brother, we fervently beseech the paraclete spirit with his sevenfold gifts to be with you, so that, aided by them, you may so pasture the faithful entrusted to your care that they may be eager to come to the table of the Eucharistic bread and also of the word of God, the force and the power of which is such that it can serve the church as her support and vigor and the children of the church as strength for their faith, food for their soul, and the pure and lasting fount of spiritual life. Council Vatican II. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all encouragement, with the protection of the Virgin Mary, bless and give joy to you and to your very dear community of Mobile. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the second day of the month of April, in the year of the Lord 2008, the third of our pontificate, Benedict XVI, Pope. Let the College of Consultors come forward to examine the apostolic mandate. Let it be known that in accord with the pr provisions of canon law, the College of Consultors has duly examined the apostolic mandate by which the most reverend Thomas J. Rohde is appointed Archbishop of the Metropolitan See of Mobile as decreed by His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI. Archbishop, 
You have heard the letter of His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI. You are called by the Holy Spirit to serve Almighty God and the people of the Archdiocese of Mobile in faith and in love as their shepherd. Are you willing to accept this metropolitan see in the tradition of the apostolic faith of our church? With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and with the love of God in my heart, I do accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Archdiocese of Mobile. I resolve to serve faithfully the spiritual needs of this local church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We accompany you. Thank you. pray. God our Father, in all the churches scattered throughout the world, you show forth the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Through the gospel and the Eucharist, 
bring your people together in the Holy Spirit and guide us in your love. Make us a sign of your love for all people and help us to show forth the living presence of Christ in the world who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit, The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, 
so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush and all the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast 
that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to begin by saying a, a number of words of thanks. And first, I, I, I'm mindful that this celebration today shares a, a very important date in the history of our country and, and our world. For it was on this date that our Allied forces reached the beaches of Normandy. And so first, just a thank you to any veterans who are here today, or those who serve actively in our armed forces. We are very fortunate that throughout our history we have had those who at great sacrifice have, have served to defend our state and our nation. I thank you, and I pray that our military will always be a force for peace in our world. I'm also mindful that today, 31 years ago, was the day that the Diocese of Biloxi was established by Pope Paul VI. A word of thank you to the people of the Diocese of Biloxi, to the religious, the clergy, the laity. Thank you. Your example of strength of character, resiliency, in the face of adversity, your faith, your generosity, and especially the kindness and love that you have shown me, believe me, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you to you all. To my family, thank you. To my sister, Sheila and Dottie, my brother-in-law, Ed, my niece, Mariah, her husband, Evan, my, my nephew, Ned, Thank you not only for being present here today, but always being there for me. And to you and to all the members of my family who are here, thank you for your support, your love. To you all, the people of the Archdiocese of Mobile, I have felt most welcome here. And I thank you. We have a rich heritage here in our Archdiocese. From that first time in 1702 when French Catholics came and established Mobile, and since then so many other people from other ethnic groups in Europe have come to us. We have the heritage of Native Americans in our archdiocese. We have the rich heritage of African American Catholics whose faith and roots go deep into our archdiocese. And other groups now have come to enrich the diversity, which is always the source of our unity. People who have come from Asia and from Latin America. I understand now we have monthly masses celebrated in Korean, celebrated in Filipino, as well as weekly masses in Vietnamese and in Spanish. To the Vietnamese American community, I wish I knew some Vietnamese to say. I only know a few words. But one word I have learned in Vietnamese is cảm ơn, thank you. And to our Vietnamese brothers and sisters, thank you for your example of love of family, your, your love of freedom, your, your faith, 
and the number of vocations that the Vietnamese community has provided to our archdiocese and to the church throughout the world. And to our Hispanic brothers and sisters, thank you for being part of the church. My Spanish is only slightly better than my Vietnamese. <laughs> but I will try to say a word of thanks. Because mis hermanos y hermanas, yo lo, le doy gracias a Dios que ustedes son miembros de la Iglesia Católica. También doy gracias por la fe y por la cultura de ustedes. Hablamos inglés o hablamos español, pero todos somos miembros de la familia de Dios, la familia de la Iglesia. Juntos, como hermanos y hermanas, Vamos caminando con Dios y uno con otro. Muchas gracias. I wish to thank my brother bishops for being here, for their support and encouragement. And especially my brother bishops of the province of Mobile, Bishop Joseph Latino, the Bishop of Jackson, and Bishop Robert Baker, the Bishop of Birmingham, Bishop William Hauk, the retired bishop, the Bishop Emeritus of Jackson, and, and Bishop David Foley, the retired bishop, the Bishop Emeritus of Birmingham. Brothers, I, I look forward to continuing to, to work together here in our province. And a special thank you. The year was 1956. A young man named Oscar Lipscomb was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Mobile. 1980, he was consecrated Archbishop of the newly established Archdiocese of Mobile. For years, through word and worship and service, he has served faithfully here in our local church. Archbishop Lipscomb, I thank you for your welcome. I thank you for the kindness you have shown to me as Bishop of Biloxi, first welcoming me, and then your encouragement after Hurricane Katrina, and your welcome in these past few weeks. Personally, I am delighted that you will continue to be a blessing to all of us in your ministry among us. And on behalf of all of us, please know, you have our respect, our affection, and our gratitude. We are privileged, honored to have the Pope's personal representative here today, Archbishop Sambi, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. Archbishop Sambi, thank you for your presence. And please convey to the Holy Father that I will exercise my ministry fully in union with the successor of Peter. But Archbishop Sambi, I want to thank you for something else for the inspiration for the next few words I'm going to give. Because I, I read in the newspaper shortly before Pope Benedict's wonderful visit to our country in April, an interview Archbishop Sambi gave. And one of the things he was asked was about the church here in the United States and Catholics here in the United States are a minority. And he said, as a minority, it is important to have a clear identity, a strong sense of belonging, and a deep commitment to excellence. Well, good people. Catholics here in Alabama constitute 
3 4% of the general population. We are a minority. But as Archbishop Sambi expressed, we must have that identity, we must have that sense of belonging and that commitment to excellence. All right, that's, first of all, that clear identity of who we are. Good people, in our baptism, we became God's sons and daughters. And God is constantly with us. That is the story of, of, of Scripture. You know, the Bible is not so much a story of our search for God, rather it really is a story of God's search for us. And God is with us, constantly drawing us to God's love. God speaks to us in the Bible. You know, most of the world looks at the Bible and all that they see is just a book. But we believe it is truly the voice of God speaking to us. And God comes to us in the Eucharist. Most of the world looks at the bread and wine and sees only bread and wine, but we believe truly this too is the presence, the real presence of the Lord, who told us that my flesh is real food and my blood real drink. This is my body, this is my blood. Do this in memory of me. And because we know we have this identity of being God's sons and daughters, being loved by God who constantly searches for us, is constantly with us in word and sacrament, we also know then we belong to something. We are not only God's sons and daughters, we are brothers and sisters to one another. The Lord constantly calls us to be God's church. And that is what we are, united with the successor of St. Peter. You know, the, the Bible is very clear that from all of his disciples, Jesus chose 12 men for special ministry. And from those 12, he chose one for a ministry of great importance, a twofold ministry of fostering unity and strengthening the faith. Simon Peter. And Peter became the first bishop of Rome. And when Peter died, we believe that the role of Peter did not die with Peter any more than the church died with Peter. Instead, this ministry of unity and strengthening the faith is passed on to whoever succeeds Peter as bishop of Rome. We are a member of a church, not merely of a congregation, a parish, or an archdiocese. We're part of a universal church. That's what the word Catholic means. And we are called to belong to this communion of God's family. We need one another. I was speaking one time with a gentleman who had not always been Catholic. He became a Catholic much later in life. And I asked him, what did you used to be? And he smiled and he said, well, I didn't used to be much of anything. He said, I, I stayed in bed on Sunday morning. He said, I refer to myself as a seventh-day horizontalist. <laughs> but he said, I realized no one preached to me except me. No one taught me right or wrong except me. And I began to get I, my ideas pretty messed up. I knew I had to belong to something greater than myself. And that's what God calls us to be, his church. And I say this, that we need this identity and this sense of belonging, not to cut us off from others, far from it. And I am so honored that we have members here of other faith communities, and I thank you for your presence. And I look forward to working together. But when we really know who we are and what we believe, then we can be authentic. And once we are authentic, it doesn't cut us off from others, quite the opposite. It is only then that we can have genuine, mutual discussion and mutual respect. And brings us into the broader community of working together for the good of all. And we need then we who are such a minority, 
a commitment to excellence in two ways. First, by our own personal example. The people who say, what are those Catholics like? Well, our example should answer that question and answer it well. By the values we live by, by what we say and what we do, the principles to which we hold. In the other way, our excellence should shine forth is through love of neighbor. And we Catholics believe that God wrote a natural law in the heart of every human being. And it's for us, through the use of reason, to discover this natural law, and aided by scripture and tradition and sacrament, to live it. And part of this law is that each one of us enjoys the dignity that only God can give this dignity of being valuable because we are a human being created in the image and likeness of God. Let me close by reading six sentences from an article I saw in the Washington Post at the time of Pope Benedict's visit to the United States in April. It was written by one of the op-ed writers of the Washington Post. It immediately caught my attention because the title of the article was An Indispensable Church, talking about us Catholics. And he concluded with this. So Catholicism offers a second contribution. It is the main defender of human dignity against a utilitarian view of human worth. <coughs> and the church has applied this high view of man with remarkable consistency to the unborn and the elderly, the immigrant and the disabled. Individual views on issues of life and death vary widely even within the Catholic Church. But it is a good thing to have at least one global institution firmly dedicated to the proposition that every growing child, every person living in squalor or in prison, every man or woman approaching death or contemplating suicide or trapped in profound mental disability, every apparently worthless life is not really worthless at all. An institution accused of superstition is now the world's most steadfast defender of rationality and human rights. It has not always lived up to its own standards. But where would those standards come from without it? Good people, we are a small percentage of Alabama. But when the Lord sent out his disciples, they were even a smaller percentage of the Roman Empire. And he had confidence in them. He said, as we just heard in the Gospel of Luke, Go out and be like yeast, that a little yeast can make the whole mass of dough rise. With God's help, serving with you and for you, I look forward that we, the people of the Archdiocese of Mobile, will be the yeast, the leaven of the Lord, in our beloved Alabama. Let us stand and profess our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, by me with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, who is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gather together in Christ as brothers and sisters. Let us call to mind God's many blessings and ask him to hear the prayers which he himself inspires us to ask. For our Pope, Benedict XVI, our Archbishop Thomas, all the church's ministers, and the people they have been called to lead and serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve us in public office and for all of those entrusted with the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Chúng ta hãy cầu nguyện cho những anh chị em đang chịu đựng đau khổ, tìm được an ủi và niềm vui trong tình thương của Chúa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole world may rejoice in the blessings of true peace, the peace Christ himself gives us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection from the adverse effects of storms, hurricanes, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos nosotros, reunidos en este santuario de fe, lleno del amor de Dios, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your church. In your love, make up for what is lacking in our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father.
pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the love of your Son. May his saving work bring salvation to all the world through the ministry of your church. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He ascended above all the heavens, and from his throne at your right hand poured into the hearts of your adopted children the Holy Spirit of your promise. With steadfast love, we sing your unending praise. We join with the host of heaven in their triumphant song. We come to you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it, granted peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for Benedict, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother, Bishop Je Oscar, and for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom now we pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you this sacrifice of praise for ourselves and those who are dear to us. We pray to you, our living and true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we honor Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, 
the apostles and martyrs Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. We honor Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Cyprian Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all the saints. May their merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life. Save us from final damnation and count us among those who have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you, an offering in spirit and truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands, and looking up to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son. We, your people and your ministers, recall his passion, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given us, we offer you, God of glory and majesty, this holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. Look with favor on these offerings and accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with a sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, too, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. Do not consider what we truly deserve but grant us forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Through him you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. And grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace. Thank you. Awesome. Peace.
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be.
Let us pray. Father, you sustain us with word and body of your Son. Watch over us with loving care. Help this church to grow in faith, holiness, charity, and loving service. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, again a word of thanks to all of you for being here. In particular, I know a number of my family and friends have come from long distances to be here. Believe me, I am most grateful for your presence. And I wish I could thank so many people who have prepared so for this beautiful celebration of faith and for the reception waiting for us outside in the cool cathedral square. <laughs> but uh, I could not name everyone, and I, I, I'm hesitant to even try to begin. But I, I would like to thank particularly Monsignor Farmer for all that he has done. He, Monsignor Key, and so many others. Thank you so very much. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Regina, Mater Misericordiae.